All right, so we're in Provincetown following Faro, but uh, there's really too much literary history here in Provincetown for me to do a short bit on it. Tennessee Williams, uh, Eugene O'Neill, both got their starts here, wrote some of their earliest plays here. Eugene O'Neill's very first performed play happened right here in P-Town. Uh, you could really say uh, Provincetown is the birthplace of modern theater. Um, Norman Mailer lived here. So many authors. Uh, it's forever been a place known for uh, its uh, artists and free thinkers, and consequently, many writers have, have uh, lived here. In fact, ev everyone finds their way to Provincetown eventually at some point. The one thing I want to stop and check out is what looks like a church behind me. It used to be a church. Now it's the uh, Provincetown Public Library, and it is definitely a cool library. And on the first floor. It's on the second floor. Okay, after you come inside, you go and come. The stairs on the left. My name's Amy Raff. I'm director here at the Provincetown Public Library. Um, we're standing on the second floor where we have a half-scale model of the Rose Dorothea. Um, the Rose Dorothea was a shipping, uh, fishing schooner that won the Lipton Cup in 1907. Mm. If you go downstairs to the first floor, you can see the actual Lipton Cup. Mm. So this model was built in here when this building was being used by the Heritage Museum. Um, it took them 11 years to complete. It took 11 years with a whole group of volunteers. Originally, this was a Methodist church in 1860. After that, it was the Chrysler Art Museum for many years. And then he took his art and went somewhere else. And then it was the um, Heritage Museum for a long time, which is when the ship was built. Here are pictures of the volunteers building the boat in the late 80s. And when did it become a library? So the library used to be located on Freeman Street, and um, we moved in here, I believe, in 2005. Mm -hmm. And it's a public library, so... It is a public library. So Provincetown is unique because there's definitely people who live here year-round, but yes. it's a tourist town. Yes. So how does that work? So it's two different towns. Um, the summer experience is very different than the rest of the year, um, and extremely different than winter. Um, you know, there's, I think, 3,200 registered voters in Provincetown, so that's our year-round population. And then in the summer, it swells to anywhere between 60 and 90,000, depending on the week and who you ask. Um, <laughs> during Carnival Week, there's, there's a lot of people here. Right. But um, we're a public library, and we're also a tourist attraction. You know, we're in a tourist town, so um, people come in a lot to use the bathroom. We're very popular for our gender-inclusive bathrooms. <laughs> and then while they're in here, they also see the ship, and a lot of people are directed to people in town, locals and residents, to come in the library and see the ship because it's really a, you know, it's a point of community pride. and It's cool. It's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. 
Okay, well, this, if you're ever in P-Town, there's many reasons to come to Provincetown. One is just to be here at the end of the, at the most kind of remote spot in the continental U.S., right at the tip of Cape Cod. Maybe Key West is uh, comparable as far as remoteness. Um, it's also just a charming town, uh, great restaurants, great, you know, things to do. There's great beaches nearby, and, uh, and uh, it's worth a visit. Uh, but when you come, be sure to check out the library. Built in an in a old Methodist church that was not here when Thoreau came, we learned that, with an incredible half-scale replica of a fishing schooner that won the Lipton Cup back in 1907 or something like that. Again, it's a cool library, but the coolest library is the one closest to you. Mm -hmm.